When we look in the mirror and decide we want to lose weight, what we're actually saying is we want to get rid of excess body fat. But if it's body fat we want to lose, why do we obsess with the scale? It's the easiest metric to gauge whether we're losing weight or not. It just can't tell us what kind of weight it is. Is it water, fat, or heaven forbid, muscle mass? Doctors use BMI to assess health risk because it's easy. It's not the best way to do this as body fat percentage and distribution come into play. Health is the best reason we'd want to know our body fat percentage. So today, we're going to look at four different ways to assess body fat at home, including one that just requires a measuring tape. The best way to figure out the accuracy of the different methods would be to compare them to a more expensive measuring device that's known to be accurate, like a bod pod or DEXA scan. I found a study that compared the exact model a handheld fat loss monitor I own to not only a bod pod, but to a seven point skin fold analysis done by a skilled technician using calipers, a $5,000 research grade bioelectric impedance machine, and several other consumer grade bioelectric devices. The study found that on average, there was no significant difference between the more expensive testing methods and my handheld fat loss monitor. The research paper valued it at $60, and I'm sure I didn't pay much more, but now they're selling for almost $400, which is absolutely ridiculous. You can buy comparable ones for much less. We're gonna do an experiment looking at three inexpensive ways to measure your body fat at home and compare them to the hand monitor. First, let's look at how the hand monitor works. It uses bioelectric impedance, sending a weak electrical current through the body. Because of this, if you have a pacemaker, you shouldn't use this method. I check my body fat first thing in the morning after I go to the bathroom and weigh myself. I enter my weight and the other information I've pre-programmed in. It requires your height, age, sex, and if you're an athlete or not. How you decide if you're an athlete is by your training and how frequent, intense, and long it is. I played around with this setting and it gives me virtually the same body fat percentage either way. You hold it out in front of you at approximately 90 degrees from your body, hit start, and completely cover the silver electrodes on the handles with your hands. This morning it came to 10% and it varies between 10 and 11% for me. We want to take the weekly average and compare it to the previous weeks to assess progress. Now that we have the 10%, let's see how it compares to the Navy body fat calculator. For this method, we need a cloth measuring tape and for men, two measurements. We want our neck circumference, the widest part under our Adam's apple, but above our traps. The other measurement is our waist, measured at the belly button. We put this into the calculator with our height and age. It comes to 11.1% body fat, so 1.1% different than my handheld. This isn't bad considering methods like the DEXA scan are within 1-2%. to What matters is we consistently measure the same way each time and as the number goes down, we'll know how much body fat we've lost. Next, we'll look at some inexpensive calipers. This is how I used to check my body fat. These cost about $10. There are three different ways you can use these calipers. I like the single site and the three site locations the best. In theory, the seven site test is the best, but unless you're experienced using calipers, it's just more opportunities to mismeasure. For the single site measurement, you find the top of your hip bone and come up about an inch. Pinch the fat horizontally, pulling it away from your body. It's essential to make sure the slide part is all the way to the right before you measure the skin fold and stop pressing as soon as you hear the click. If you keep pushing, you'll get a false reading. You check it in millimeters and it goes up in increments of two on the chart. In my case, I'm just over the two millimeter mark, which puts me at 9.9%. One of the problems with the single site is it gives you a range instead of a single number you can average. The three point method works better if you have someone to help you. On men, it takes the fat measurements from the halfway point between your nipple and where your shoulder and chest come together by your armpit. The next measurement is to the right of the belly button and the final one is halfway between the hip and the knee. I did these measurements myself and once I added them into the calculator, I came up with almost 6.3% body fat, which is clearly inaccurate. This can be an accurate gauge of body fat, but it takes practice, and I'd invest in a better quality caliper. Finding out what our body fat percentage is, is only one piece of the puzzle. To learn how to stay lean all year round and still build muscle, watch this video next so we can keep working out while having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you again in the next one.